the Sony PlayStation was a monster of a JRPG machine. However, some of them haven't aged all that well. Let's talk about 10 PlayStation 1 RPGs that deserve a remake. Hey there, my name is Justin, aka Shinky, and this is Shinky JRPGs. The PS1 was when I really started to get into JRPGs. I had dabbled in the genre beforehand with Dragon Quest on the NES, but once the PlayStation hit, that is when I fell in love with JRPGs. Unfortunately, as some of these games are pushing 25 years old, some have not aged all that well. I'm here to talk about 10 JRPGs that I feel deserve a remake. But before we jump into the video, do you enjoy JRPG lists and reviews? If so, make sure to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and let me know. If you could pick one PlayStation 1 JRPG to get a fully fledged remake, which one would you choose? Anyways, enough talk, let's ice that drink and pop that corn. It's time to talk about 10 PlayStation 1 JRPGs that deserve a remake. The Grandstream Saga, released on June 29, 1998. Grandstream Saga is the mystical and forever lost part 4 of the Quintet or Heaven and Earth trilogy that was on Super Nintendo, consisting of Soul Blazer, Illusion of Gaia, and Terra Enigma. I've talked about this series before, but why is Grandstream Saga like a redheaded stepchild of the series? Well, Grandstream Saga just made too many changes and didn't transition very well to 3D. Combat is now incredibly slow is essentially turn-based, and just doesn't look that great visually. Outside of battle, the game is even slower with grid-based movement. At least the music is good, but I feel like with improved gameplay and visuals, this game could actually be loved. Threads of Fate, released on July 18th of 2000. I've talked about Threads of Fate before in my video about games that should be brought to PlayStation Classics, Threads of Fate is just such a unique experience with two completely different characters that have entirely different gameplay styles. You have Rue, who plays like a typical swordsman that uses an axe and can transform into monsters, and Mint, who can cast several different types of spells. I honestly just adore the art style, and the game has some of the silliest characters. Unfortunately, this game really didn't go much further than the initial release. So part of me is hoping that one day we can get a remake, and that paves the way for perhaps a sequel. I'd even settle for like an anime or a TV series. The Legend of Dragoon, released June 13th of 2000. Once spouted as the Final Fantasy Killer, clearly that didn't happen, but it was a solid game in its own right. It wasn't particularly original with the story, but where it stood out was the battle system. While most games involve just pressing confirm repeatedly, Legend of Dragoon had you pressing buttons at the exact right time to perform additions for, well, additional damage. Why does it need a remake? It's probably the worst game on this list for aging terribly. First of all, everything is incredibly slow, be it movement, combat, entering combat, opening menus, everything just takes forever. Magic is only usable either through magic items or while you're in a Dragoon transformation stage. The worst offender though is the incredibly limited item space limit. You have a max item stock of 32. Not 32 different types of items, but 32 total. For example, if you are carrying 10 potions, that's 10 of your 32 total items. It leads to you constantly throwing out items and managing your inventory more than most MMO titles and with the slow menus, it makes it even worse. It's frustrating and needs those quality of life improvements. Besides, everyone and their mother begs for a remake of this game. I think it's about time for it just to happen. Wild Arms 2, released on May 2nd of 2000. Wild Arms 2 was one of the first PlayStation RPGs I had ever gotten into. This was actually a game I expected to get a remake of while I was growing up. 
The first Wild Arms game got a remake in 2003 on the PlayStation 2 under the title of Wild Arms Alter Code F, and I was expecting 2 to closely follow. In fact, now I could be imagining things, I mean come on it was like 20 years ago, but I think one was planned under the name Another Code F. I wish that game would have happened because this game really needs a remake. Not only because the game feels very low budget, with several different spell animations being identical. Seriously, you have Tim and Lulka's spells, they don't really change animations, they look exactly the same. But another reason is the translation left of it to be desired. The translation errors are everywhere, even some that affect being able to properly solve puzzles. It's a great game, but I'd love to be able to re-experience it one day in a more ironed out form. And hey, if you're enjoying this video so far and want more JRPG lists and reviews, make sure to subscribe for more JRPG content. And while you're at it, hit that like button. It really helps support the channel by pushing the video upwards in the YouTube algorithm. Mega Man Legends and Mega Man Legends 2 released in 1997 and 2000 respectively. I am quite aware that Mega Man Legends is not a JRPG and more of an action adventure game but I feel this game has more than enough RPG elements to be considered a game for this list. It has an incredibly in-depth story, and a really good one at that, an equipment system, and even a good and evil alignment. But why do these games need remakes? Well, I'll be honest, I actually just finished playing the game, but the controls are terrible. Since this game was an early PlayStation 1 title, it does not incorporate DualShock controls, at least for the first game. The game controls like a tank, with strafing and movement being assigned to the d-pad and turning left and right assigned to the shoulder buttons. It's very strange and a little bit frustrating when you need to turn and you can't move while you do it unless you want to do a very wide turn using the strafing. It's really cumbersome and could use some updated controls. I'd also use any excuse for Capcom to see that people actually want Mega Man and it would be nice to have the cliffhanger at the end of Mega Man Legends 2 resolved. I'm still incredibly upset that they cancelled Mega Man Legends 3 for whatever reason. Guardians Crusade, released on March 3rd, 1999. Guardians Crusade is a very cartoony looking game. I really love the art styles like this. There's just something about them that seemed to age incredibly well. For the most part, Guardian Crusade is a generic turn-based RPG. However, your main hero, Knight, Strange name. Anyways, Knight can summon Living Toys, or LT. Living Toys can be used for multiple purposes, such as they can attack directly, they can buff your characters, heal, or do a bunch of miscellaneous things like allow you to view the world map while outside. Guardian's Crusade is pretty simple, but it's one of those games that's just nice basic fun, and that's it. Remember when games were fun solely for the sake of fun? Back before every game tried to change things and be unique? Sayuki Journey West, released on August 13th, 2001, is a strategy RPG loosely based off of the Chinese novel Journey to the West. Sayuki follows the story of Sanzo, a Buddhist practitioner on a religious journey from China to India, resulting in many adventures along the way in typical JRPG fashion. The main gimmick of Sayuki is that every character other than Sanzo can transform into a monster for a limited time where Sanzo gets access to summon spells that can buff your party. Each character has an elemental affinity which buffs spells of that element but makes some weak to the opposing element. Kinda like how Persona does it. The game was moderately well received back in 2001 and is kind of a cult classic these days as there are some people that absolutely adore the game but the game is generally unheard of. Bring it back, it was a really good time and I wouldn't complain if we got more strategy RPGs. Speaking of which, where is that Final Fantasy Tactics remake? Waiting Square Enix. And speaking of Square Enix, Xenogears, released October 20th, 1998, is a turn-based RPG. Everyone and their mothers has heard of this game and is commonly known as one of the best games available on the PlayStation. Anyone that has played Xenogears knows exactly why it deserves a remake. Xenogears is what I like to call half of a good game. Disc 1 is amazing. Great story, great gameplay, amazing twists and turns, it's hard to see how it could possibly go wrong. However, once you hit disc 2, now I'm not sure how entirely accurate this is, 
but the funding for the game was diverted to pay for Final Fantasy VIII allegedly. So most of the remaining story is portrayed in a visual novel style. You hear about what should be bosses, but you don't actually fight them. Some would call it streamlined, I just call it disappointing. If this game happened to get a remake, I would love to have the second half of the game completed, so we could finally get that full experience. Perhaps one day it'll happen, especially with how popular the Xeno series has gotten with the Xenoblade Chronicle series. Alundra, released January 7th, 1998, is an action-adventure game in the same style as Zelda. Alundra is the working designs tax for this video. You know I have to talk about that localization team at least once per video. Most people just refer to this as a Zelda clone. But the difference between Alundra and Zelda is the puzzles. Now, Zelda has some decent puzzles, but they're generally pretty easy. Alundra, on the other hand, still has some of the most difficult puzzles in any game I've ever experienced to this day. And you know what? I miss that. JRPGs have gotten too simplified with puzzles. Maybe that's why they're kind of starting to feel a bit bland? Oh well, that's a conversation for another day though. Actually, I've already covered JRPG puzzles and why I feel like they need to come back. Maybe check that out at the end of the video. But Alundra is an amazing game and absolutely needs an HD2D remake because it's just such a great time and it's so unique in the way that everything is portrayed in it. But you know, maybe it'll happen. Last but not least, we have Final Fantasy VIII. Final Fantasy VIII was released September 9th, 1999. 9, 9, 99. 9, 999. I still love that release date. It's the most JRPG release date ever. Final Fantasy VIII is my favorite of the PS1 Final Fantasy trilogy. However, even if it is my favorite, I will not deny that it has a plethora of problems. It's unbalanced, the grinding for magic is insane, and the junction system is the most broken level up system I've ever experienced. Like, generally at the beginning of a playthrough, two hours into the game, I'm sitting at like 4000 HP and the rest of the game is just spamming limit breaks. It's stupid, it's ridiculous, it needs to be fixed. And don't even get me started on the whole enemies scaling with your average party level ridiculousness. I feel a remake would have to maintain the draw system. But maybe fix it so you don't spend forever drawing 100 stock of magic from every encounter. Maybe limit what you can junction according to your character's level. You know, you're level 12, you can only junction 12 spells to that particular stat. And fix the infinite amount of plot holes that Final Fantasy VIII is known for. Seriously, that story does not make any sense. Because plot hole after plot hole after plot hole. Final Fantasy VIII is a great game, but I'd be lying if I said it didn't have lots of issues that need to be fixed. And a remake is the only way these problems can finally be rectified. So there you have it. The PlayStation had several amazing games, so many in fact that picking just 10 for this list was quite the ordeal. How do you feel about the list? Did I name the game you were thinking of? Regardless, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this list and want to enjoy more great JRPG content, Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a second of my future videos. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a wonderful day. Super Retro Force.